Next up on the docket is a topic very near and dear to our hearts, especially one Alex Patalia. Uh, this is about shader compilation in DirectX. And we actually got some, so Microsoft actually posted a developer blog about their new advanced shader delivery system. And Alex actually had a chance to speak with one of the engineers related to this project who shed a lot of light on what they're trying to achieve with this. Um, and I'm curious, Alex, do you think that this is indeed where Microsoft is going? Is their strategy promising enough that you think they can actually solve this? Yeah, so uh, one thing to get out there is I would love to do an official uh, interview uh, with uh, engineers on this project. Um, I think that would be very doable. And then we could talk about it extremely directly and ask all the questions about motivations and whatnot. But based upon what I can see right here, as uh, well, uh, what I heard behind the scenes, this looks like Microsoft's um, complete attempt to fix shader compilation stuttering issues on PC. And it's a, it's a pretty large mechanism that they're describing here. The initial part of the blog is only talking about this idea uh, within the confines of applying it to the Asus ROG Ally X, uh, the new Xbox thing. Uh, and there, the basic idea is that uh, developers would provide like this large shader blob, uh, an intermediate format uh, to Microsoft, which would be then compiled in the cloud and delivered as files uh, with the game download potentially, or with a driver update uh, to the device. In this case, it's the ROG Xbox Ally X, etc. You know, and this would be similar to the shader delivery system that occurs on the Steam Deck. Right. Right. That is uh, not uh, anything really new. We see that with Vulcan on Steam, and that is the thing that happens. But this is Microsoft taking control of it and offering this functionality. Uh, for this new product. The interesting part is the second part of the blog. <laughs> I, I mean, this is that's fine for that product, right? Uh, the things that are not uh, fixed, though, in the shader cache, as in the things that the developer didn't provide, uh, would be then done in the normal way as the way DirectX does it. This isn't changing the way uh, DirectX looks at shaders in general or anything like that. The, the interesting part of the blog, though, is the what's next part where they're talking about how they want to position this in the future. Because right now on PC, the only way a developer really gets shader compilation done is by them providing some sort of list beforehand, compiling them up at load, or compiling them while you're playing the game using this list. Or if a shader comes up, they delay its display and they run it asynchronously in the background, causing CPU load, extra CPU load. Uh, sometimes they don't even do that, and it's just just in time causes this massive stutter that I've been talking about for what feels like five years now. Mm -hmm. um, I think it has been, actually. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's been a really long time. I'm pretty sure the first game I ever talked about it ex super explicitly might have been uh, Battlefield 5 in 2018. Um, so, yeah, which, yeah. by the way, still has that issue. Right. Um, but the idea is now for the future is to open this up and create an API behind it to allow it to be done on a variety of storefronts. And it, they don't explicitly say, well, who's going to be crunching the shaders there or something like that. They, that's not really a part of the blog. And they want to start an open dialogue with developers and get them on board with this idea as well as get the various hardware partners on board. So here, this would mean not uh, your various uh, handheld developers or something like that. Here, they're talking about, no, we want AMD specifically. We want Intel specifically. We want NVIDIA. And I guess they're going to include something like Qualcomm. But, but <laughs> right, right, right. like anyone mm. cares. Um, but the idea then is to allow this functionality to occur for all GPUs and all driver versions, and the oh, way okay. the way that would work would be um, essentially the the infrastructure provider, whether that be Microsoft or whomever at this gaming storefront, or maybe it's you know one of the IHVs themselves, has the ability to have their GPU compiler in the cloud on a server, not attached to any of the hardware itself that is requiring it. You know, for example, it doesn't need like a 
RTX 3060 in the system to compile those versions uh, of the shaders. And instead, it has essentially the entire list and configurations possible, which is totally doable. And then when you download your game or when you update your driver, potentially, you would get the new set as provided by a download service. Uh, and that's where they, where they mentioned storefronts and whatnot. And the idea would be that you then, instead of having to compile the games as the game is loading for the first time or in the middle of a game, you would just get it downloaded to your machine right before you play. And this is actually a lot more than like the console model because each title update for a game using a specific SDK on console or shipping on disc will also provide uh, those shaders to the game. And that mm -hmm. is actually a lot more console-like, but the, the variety of configurations is a lot higher. Hence why you really should be using something like cloud-based servers to be doing all this crunching. But it's actually not that many configurations in the end in comparison to what it potentially was before. And the amount of energy used to do this is also a lot before. If you think about it before, every single person, even though if they had the exact same configuration, would be doing this manually on their PC. And now this actually is a really big deal because now the, the limit to how many shaders can be brought up front and compiled in the first place is limited now by download size. And shader size is actually pretty small. And a lot of developers in the past or it's, it's also not downloaded. It's not limited anymore by the amount of time that compilation takes because that's all offline. And, you know, it's actually online in the cloud, asynchronous. It doesn't really matter anymore. It's going to be fast. Um, and uh, as I was talking to developers before in a number of video interviews we've done and off this record, they say, I'm always like, OK, you have all the shader code, though. Why can't you just let us compile all the shaders? Why do you have to miss some? Why do you have to do this stupid uh, process of manually gathering them and whatnot to find the ones that are the most relevant to your game? And they would say, well, we, we could potentially do that. Epic specifically has said this before. Well, we could potentially do that. Uh, but it takes so long on your local machine that you'd be waiting for hours to do that. Uh, we don't want the user, either in the editor or in game to be waiting hours. So we come up with these systems that are really actually somewhat imperfect uh, and your game is still stuttering. Fortnite still stutters, right? Yep. Uh, well, if that is no longer the bottleneck, the developer could just provide all of that intermediate shader code to this cloud service and allow that to do it very quickly for any configurations really out there and then send them to the user. So you could potentially with this new system never have the problem in general anymore that shaders are missed because you don't have to do the strange collection processes to gather the only the most relevant ones. And this is a big deal because it could potentially mean the, the complete and utter elimination of this problem on the PC platform, My goodness. Uh, which is huge. And yeah. for me, this is going to, I mean, there are probably other ways to solve this issue. Uh, Valve's fossilize is another interesting idea, uh, but I've talked about that before, but this doesn't seem to be that. This seems to be the full, the, the mechanism here is cloud does all the compilation and sends you the files. Uh, and given the way the current infrastructure is, I actually think it makes a lot of sense. Um, and the, the thing at the bottom of the blog though, that is really important to talk about is that they do say they want to, get developers to engage with this feature. And they also want to grow it to the hardware partners uh, that that they have. That would be their Intels, the NVIDIAs, the AMDs, and the Qualcomms, et cetera. And in this case, developers really, and I'm saying this to the audience, if you're a developer out there and you're interested in this, definitely try and contact Microsoft and pay attention to what they're saying and see if you can get in on it early. And uh, we as users and reviewers and players of games should be putting pressure on the graphics card manufacturers to make sure that they support a system like this. Because uh, if you could imagine, the, sh the, the shared compiler generally in the past has been something kind of secretive, like Sony keeps their stuff all secretive, right? NVIDIA right, keeps right. their stuff all secretive. Um, these things really ought to be somewhat centralized at some point and updated, obviously, regularly through the IHVs, but they shouldn't be holding on to that anymore only for their own benefit, because technically the users, if this is put in a cloud system, could benefit massively from no longer having any stutter from shader compilation, at least in their PC games anymore. So we got to we got to put on the pressure, guys. That's what I say. Um, but yeah, uh, this is a this is actually a really big deal. It was kind of buried with all the Gamescom stuff. And also it's kind of buried by the whole ASUS 
wrong Xbox LIX, which to me, sorry, I just don't really care at the moment, but um, the, the, the whole shader compilation part of it is actually a huge deal. And we, uh, big things could be happening. We just have to keep up with it and push for it to happen. So I have a couple of questions on that, Alex, I'm wondering about. Yeah. So Microsoft is writing about this. Do, does this specifically apply to software sold through their storefronts? Can this be used with things like Steam as well? Yeah, so at the at the moment, it will be through the Xbox storefront, but that's why the second part of the, the blog specifically right. mentions set of tools and APIs needed to expand the, the coverage across the industry. And for uh, they specifically do remember other gaming storefronts and developers. So good, this good, would good. apply to Epic, GOG, what have you. It, it could be done through a Windows update system, but I think if it's spread and there's a variety of versions of this, it'll all make sense. And you know, any of the double coverage that could occur as a result of it, say you have a GOG version of the game and a Steam version of the game, if you download a double the shader files or whatever, we're still talking about like just a, like hundreds of megabytes here. It's really doesn't really matter. Right, right, right. Uh, exactly. So the double coverage doesn't doesn't really matter. I also saw some concern uh, from from some users that were suggesting like, does this if it if everything's being compiled on the cloud server then? Right. What does this mean for support of like say new GPUs, chipsets, and the like? Uh, does this ins- basically mean that they are now one hundred percent reliant on what's happening on the server? So if software is relying on this, then um, and let's say in-game local compilation was removed, right? What would that do for this sort of like hardware that's perhaps not yet in that database or whatever, or not be isn't being compiled for? Well. I mean, that is actually a pretty good question. Uh, fallback could be useful. It would mean more work potentially because then they would, the developers right. would do whatever they're doing the, currently and then and also this extra step. Exactly. Uh, but the benefits here outweigh the, the negative aspects, I would say. Uh, and also, don't like the shader compiler here is like, if it is in the cloud, the amount of combinations it can spin off there is not limited by the hardware they have available. Rather, it's what the shader compiler has actually been programmed to be able to do all those configurations that it's possible of doing driver version plus hardware revision uh, and et cetera. So, cool. you know, it feels like actually it's a lot more solvable than it was through other means in the past. Wonderful. Uh, Oliver, do you have any thoughts on this one? Well, just, um, I mean, I think it's very promising. There are kind of a couple failure points. You kind of mentioned, you know, the issue with fallbacks. I kind of do wonder at some point in the distant future, I know John always harps on about this, but at some point oh, in the yeah, distant future, for good reason. maybe the Xbox store is no longer operational in some form and you don't get your pre-compiled shaders and then you're dealing with your, you know, your just-in-time shader compilation woes again. That's 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 one concern, but that's kind of unavoidable with this whole approach, isn't it? Um and then also, like, you know, I don't know, would the IHVs provide drivers, do you think, in advance to Microsoft so they could kind of get this already in advance of new driver updates? I'd, I'd hope that would be the case because otherwise you might have some lag between when the driver hits, you know, your right. your release branch and when you're actually uh, engaging with that software and not having the appropriate uh, shaders to, to work with there. Um, but in general, I think this makes the next generation like Xbox console make a lot more sense potentially because uh, this makes that yeah. device much more console-like in terms of its approach to shaders and in terms of its distribution of shaders. So um, I think that's yep. very promising and I think this is a very exciting effort. Obviously with Fossilize, you have something that's kind of similar but still involves that user side shader pre-compilation. And so it's a bit of a latency uh, there. I noticed that in there materials here they really suggest that the primary issue is delays before a game launches which i would suggest you know predominantly that's not the concern to me predominantly the concern is uh those kinds of just-in-time shader compilation problems that we tend to observe in games especially like after you've maybe run through the game the first time you're updating your driver and you're coming back to it and then you're dealing with those issues again that's really my kind of concern i'm fine waiting a few minutes maybe not a few hours as alex has suggested to clear all the permutations but i'm certainly fine waiting a few minutes in advance of yeah, playing yeah, the game yeah. if it can resolve most of those issues right so but i'm glad both yeah. issues are being resolved here yeah regarding, okay. the, regarding the driver thing like you were just talking about though uh so one thing that the the, the developers on, on the graphics driver side do is there are whql whql drivers anyway so they are submitting to Microsoft at some level already. Right. And a, a second thing is that 
we don't know the infrastructure here. It's not laid out in clear terms about what it could mean. There could be special deals made with the these IHVs to say like, oh, you actually maintain the backup. The, you may you maintain the back end stuff about which compiler versions are available in the cloud. So as they put out their beta drivers, that could already already you know have been crunched in the cloud uh, by that point in time. Uh, so yeah, I, I, but I definitely think there's so many. This is just the first blog. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there's a lot of questions there, but I think this is the currently the most promising way to solve this because we've seen if you just rely on the developers. It's such an incomplete and haphazard thing that some devs do it fine and others do it really woefully. So uh, we need some way to go beyond the developers and take it, take a look at it at a systemic level. And I think this is the way to do it. Indeed, it's basically the key to the entire next generation Xbox puzzle, so to speak. Right. If they really wanted to marry console and PC together, they had to figure this out. So this is great, very, very promising. We could finally potentially end stutter struggle once and for all. 